Are you recording? recording? Yeah, it says recording. recording. All right, well, what are you going to shoot? Take pictures of the road or are you going to take pictures of me? Oh. <laughs> well, we got the road, now we got you. Yeah. Okay. Are you pointed it at me or are you pointed it? It looks beautiful. Oh, okay. Talk. No, we're going, um, it, this is Uncle Robbie. I'm here with Johnny C. And we're real excited today because we're on a big, big ass road trip. We're going down to New York City and Southern New Jersey to pick up some equipment. So here we are back on the road with Uncle Robbie. Cut. Anything, I gotta turn the music off. Why is that? So I don't get a copyright strike. Oh, they're gonna really strike you for that? Yeah, of course they would. They're oh. YouTube. You, I, I did a video. Oh, me and Andy West were shopping for dinner in Kroger's in, uh, in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And there was music playing over the store sound system. Yeah. And they, they gave me a copyright strike on that part of the video that had background music in it. So yeah, YouTube will copyright strike you for anything. And uh, what is the penalty for that? They take, the, well, usually they just demonetize you. Oh, that's not But bad. sometimes they take your video down. Oh. Um, so it's like, even, even if you're doing a guitar instruction video mm -hmm. on YouTube, like Rick Beetle, he'll play a part by the, and they'll demonetize his video because he played apart from another song so some girl named Nikki Grant put a copyright claim in me for my little title sequence for On the Road and I was like what did I get dinged for? I mean first of all just to find out what I got dinged for was a pain in the ass it took a while for that and then they, it was my sequence and it said Nikki Grant Under the Sea and I was like okay well if she's using that music, then she can't ding me because that was the music from my computer. It was just regular, unlicensed, generic music. What if you play an E chord? Do you have to pay Hal Leonard to play an E chord? It's, it's, it's actually going... There, there was a big lawsuit about it lately, John. Uh -huh. there, there was a... You know, I mean... Some people, they're like, oh, this chord progression sounds too much like this other song. Well, how many fucking chord progressions are there in the universe, you know? Huh. Well, I understand from my time at the TV studio that you can play five seconds of anything and it's okay. Uh, various um, provisions. Yeah. So let's hear five seconds of the song that we're, we're hearing. Uh, no, and you can't even put five even seconds. Not, how about four seconds? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know what the... YouTube is so ambiguous right now. Uh, don't swing the camera too quickly. It yeah, doesn't, I know. It doesn't. I wanted to get the sign to show people where After we were. After two miles, keep right towards New York. After two miles, keep right towards New York. So it just told us where we're going. All right. Well, good. Are we going to have to pay for the um, GPS lady voice? What? No. No. Okay. no. That's, that's okay. GPS lady voice is okay. She's licensed for all yeah. uses. Do me a favor. Put my checkbook in the fucking glove compartment. Okay. Don't be videoing my checkbook, though. Because <laughs> somebody right. will steal my numbers and they'll fortunately delete my account. True. But, uh, anyway. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot of this sign here. All right. And then I'm going to put the camera back. And we'll pick up city for 15 miles. Where are we 
movie now, John? Oh, we're around Harriman, I Hold guess. On, let, me, let me get you a better picture of the New York City sign, John. Overhead. You gotta be aware of this, John. Yeah, I'm here. That's why I got out from behind that truck. Nice. So you can get some good video of our wonderful trip. Right along. It's been a beautiful day. I could have mounted a GoPro on the dashboard. We could have, like, set it for fucking, like, so it would just be time delay shit. We could have done the whole, you know, 200 mile trip in 45 seconds. <laughs> Maybe I can speed this up. I'm doing a little zoom action here. Yeah. Get used to working with the camera, John, because you're the cameraman. That's right. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little video on on what you should look for when you're buying used marshals. Yeah. On marshal collecting. First thing to remember is to make sure your screw gun has a screw tip on it. Yeah. That's the first thing. Well, leave it to The second thing is to right. make sure your batteries charge your screw gun. Yes. Well, we made sure of that. I told you that last night. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty much like you know the the contingency plan kind of guy. Well, me too. But when I depend on others, then I, I turn my brain off and I lose parts of the story. Well, I would have assumed that you would have brought a screw tip with you in your, your screw. Well, but, I didn't want to bring the whole case without all the accessories in it. Yeah, but I, I think you might have put a screw tip in the gun. You know, well, I mean, I was, you know, yeah. don't let me assume anything. I know. So what's our date today? I don't think we uh, date stamp this um, video. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's August 11th. But they don't need to know that. It could be any any day in the summertime. I'm driving in the car here with the windows up so we don't get all wind noise in the microphones. Yeah, 8, 11, 22. Yeah. A day like no other. Here's a little bit of um, the scenery. Oh, no, the trees are in the way of the cliffs. There's some of the cliffs. Here's an opening for you. Beautiful. I'm probably just going to edit all this out, John. It's, it's never going to see the light of day. Um, but there's there's 21 hours left on that memory card, so we could have shot from the time we we could have continuously rolled from the, from the time we left the house to the time we get home. Well, it depends when the cameraman wants to practice his creativity. That's true. You can practice your creativity, John. And if you want, we can load this all up into your computer, and you can do whatever you want with that. No. You're right. It's going to be kind of boring, yeah. mostly. All right. Well, we shot a scene. That's good. Okay, that's good. Start off with that. I'm so, trying. did you actually hang out with Peter Steele? When he was alive. Yeah, I hung out with Pete. Oh, I hung out with Pete a lot, actually. And did you actually like have drink drink beers and stuff, or did you just hang out in the lobby of the rehearsal no, studio? I, in the early days of Carnivore, yeah, I hung out with them a lot because uh, I was friends with Kenny Creedy, who was Carnivore's first manager. I was actually Carnivore's first management team was called Metcam Management. And uh, it was it was uh, Ken Creedy, this guy Paul, Black Paul, and uh, he's a nice guy, black guy though. And uh, that's why we call him Black Paul because it was two Pauls, but it doesn't matter. And Julie Serrago. Did Kenny Creedy have something to do with the Moors? Yeah, he was the DJ there. Well, well, I mean, back in the old days, I mean, we're still in high school. So Kenny used to get into Lemoore's. He would get videos from, you know, the city, he'd go into the city and, and he'd rent videos, like, kind of like you do, he'd rent them and copy them and stuff, and then he would, he would get in free because he would bring videos to Alex, um, Kane, the DJ there, but anyway, so Kenny and Julie and Paul were the original managers of Carnivore, until Connie Barrett, whoever the fuck it was, took over, but, um, anyway, so, I, you know, this is back in the early days when they were taking their first promo pictures and stuff, and, you know, I went with them and, um, 
Chris Barbarian's brother, I think his name was Peter, um, took the first the first photos of carnivore and stuff like that. And um, you know, so yeah, I hung out with with Keith and Peter. I, I opened up for carnivore at a, a bunch of shows when I was with Black Virgin because they, you know, they were playing they, when they started. They were playing like you know places like wonderful places like the Intimate Lounge in Staten Island, you know, so Black Virgin, and there was like no one there that day. So we actually played, we were using my little PA system that I had in my basement for practice. And, uh, and, and we were, you know, just, I don't know, maybe, maybe 15, 20 people would show up, you know, to that gig. The second time they played the Club Intimate or the Intimate Lounge, whatever it's called, on Staten Island, Blessed Death opened for him, so they, Blessed Death was the old bridge metal militia guys. Yeah, you got that record. Yo, you got Blessed Death? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great album. Well, Blessed Death's first album and, and the Primal album are very similar. I mean, everybody was grooving off of each other back then, so. But, um. I, I was at I was I, I can't, can't say I was at every single one of them, but I was at most of them. Yeah, up until the point where Keith left or uh, get kicked out or whatever. And, and was Keith a competent player in those early days? Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he was. I mean, he was. Keith Keith wasn't like an Inve Malmsteen, you know, um, you know, Steve Vai Shredder, but Keith. Yeah, he, I mean, he, Keith was. He had a he had a little problem with timing sometimes, you know. He like he couldn't figure out where the one was, um, or, or maybe it was because he was like, no, the one should be where I say the one is, you know. Fuck what you know the metronome is, um, you know. Me and Steve, me and Steve always like man, Keith had terrible sense of timing, and I have like you know as you know I have a near perfect sense of timing, right? Um, Especially in odd time signatures. Yeah, I'm good at that shit. But anyway, so, uh, so, Keith was, you know, he was, he was a good, he was a good guitar player. And the thing was that if you ever see the early promo pictures of Carnivore, here's three big guys. They're all over six foot, I think they're all over six foot three. After you know? two miles, keep left, Interstate 87, right, southbound, you towards New York City. All right, shut you off right now because we're not going that way anymore but um so Keith yeah Keith was a good guitar player um and I mean he had he had you know his picking was fantastic and he, his fingers were but he wasn't like a super fast shredder guy <laughs> but he I would have to say that in the grand scheme of things Keith was a guitar hero in my opinion so and, well, I love what, Keith but. why did Pete still Keith Alexander out of time for I why um I don't know. There's there's a lot of underlying reason. You know, uh, could have been something with some girl or something, you know, personality conflicts, girlfriend conflicts, shit like that. Did Keith have mood disorders? Uh, no, I don't I don't I mean does does everybody have a mood disorder? What does personality change from day to day? Um, not really. Keith was an asshole pretty much all the time. But he was, he was, he was our asshole, so There's we a loved him. Quote. What? There's a quotable quote. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I love Keith, but he was a dick. And you know, the thing was, he eventually Keith, and this is years later. This is like, you know, right before he died. He like became like a Buddhist, and he got like all into about the mindfulness shit, you know, and I mean, if I would have loved to have been able to hang out with Keith now at the, at the stage in our lives that we'd be at, because there, you know, we really got into the, um, you know, especially when I was in AA and shit like that, doing that, I got into the whole mindful awareness thing and the, you know, the semi-Buddhist, um, had going on. That's kind of where Keith got. He got into the Japanese stuff, martial arts. He was doing the body modification crap, you know, so it was all about mind, body, spirit, you know, and I'm like, I don't know how, you know, tattooing and, and piercing one's body is 
you know, for spiritual awakening, but I guess... Transcendence through pain, that's what I've heard it is about. Yeah, I guess, you know, I don't know. I got, I got carved up with some tattoos, but, um, you know, for me it was more like, wow, I can finally get a tattoo. You know, because I, 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 well, I won't go into why I couldn't have tattoos or other identifying marks for years and years and years, but, um... So, when you started playing with Keith in Primal Scream, um, do you think maybe Peter was happy to hang out with you because you took the, uh, the load off and you, you could handle Keith and he didn't have to anymore? No, that's, as, as actually, that's complete and total speculation that's not true. <laughs> okay, um, so tell us the truth. Pete, Pete just, well, I mean, Pete always thought I was a dick. I thought Pete was a dick. Pete knew he was a dick. I knew I was a dick. Holy shit, 393 for gas. We're getting getting gas at the next possible place we can, uh, can stop. So why don't you put that on hold for a second? Okay. What are we on? Yeah, what road are we on? We're currently video. on the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Alright, I noticed we just passed 38th Street. Yeah. This is down in the, uh, we, we call this, uh, Park Slope, Park Slope area. Sunset Park, really. My grandmother used to live, like, I don't know, three blocks that way. To the, to the right. You didn't get video of my old house that I used to live in, which doesn't even, it looks pretty though, it's a nice house still. I'm glad somebody's taking care of it, but this is, uh, <coughs> this is <coughs> what's known as sitting in New York City afternoon traffic. At least we're moving, as long as it's not standstill. What happens is you get up here, when you get down into, um, like, I don't know they call it Borland Park, Park Slope, whatever. Um, you get into the, it goes into the pit, they call it. They got some graffiti. Yeah, that's wonderful. Graffiti in the church. Yeah, that's, this neighborhood's changed a lot, put it this way. I zoomed into the scene. We are not government issued, look at that, oh, get yeah. that, get that. We are not government issued. You fucking leftist bastards, you. Not government issued. No, you're a beautiful little snowflake with your little parachute. I'd like to throw you out of a fucking plane without one, God damn So it. I'm pretending we're in the mountains? Now there is the Manhattan skyline, and that building right in front of the Freedom Tower, mm. or to the side of it, yeah. that's the one I used to work in. That's one New York Plaza. I was the operating engineer in that building. Wow. Yeah, I used to. My uncle was the property manager, and I was the night shift engineer's helper. Oh. I swear to God, I used to sit up every night praying, oh God, I hope Robbie, that fucking idiot, doesn't burn down my building. <laughs> I'm sure he, he did a couple of Hail Marys and Novenas, but uh, anyway. So right here, if we wanted to go to Farrell's, for my, we used to be my favorite bar. Mm -hmm. You would get off the Prospect Expressway, but unfortunately today we do not have time for that. Okay. If we could have come here on a Saturday, I could have made this the trip of your... And if we weren't driving the, the truck, obviously, with Marshall cabinets in them, we could have uh, parked on the street. I mean, Brooklyn is a shithole. The whole city's a shithole, but Brooklyn is fucked up. Down here... It's like you go from one block to another. One block is beautiful. And they're all like million dollar houses or more, two million dollar houses. But it's like you go from block to block. One block is like, you know, totally gentrified, you know, uh, yuppie white people who weren't born in New York. They're from other places. I call them foreigners. Mm -hmm. Then you got another block, which is all foreigners who weren't even born in this country. You know, so it's like, you know, and some and some of those blocks are beautiful depending what kind of form is on, but it's, uh, it's, some of it's like, it's like Vietnam. You can go from like, 
you know, leave it to Beaver to Vietnam in two, three blocks. So, but this is all changing. I mean, look at the shit they're building here. There's a Home Depot over here that wasn't there when I lived here. The Bruno truck sale sign has been here forever. Hmm. This big building, I have no idea what that is. Uh, this wasn't here the last time I was here, I don't think. Or maybe it was. Or I was, last time I came down this road, it was dark, though. And actually, last time I came down this road, it was an express bus, so. Huh. That's the uh, TV studio. My friend Roberta works in there sometimes when she's doing uh, her acting jobs there. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. Is that Roberta with the clothing line? Yeah, from Wicked. I won't say anything more about Roberta. Except I love you, Roberta. I gotta come do a Wicked show one of these days. But I, she's been on a bunch of shit. She's been on like Gotham and stuff like that. Funny neighborhood, you know? Bohemians. Hipsters. The Williamsburg Montessori School. You can tell you can tell the the, the, the uh, and Chai <coughs> Urgent Chai Urgent Care. Is it like a, where you get a like a latte or is it like where you get you know an MRI or something? And this girl's getting oh she's a pregnant chick waiting for an Uber. That's good. But none of these buildings really were here back then. Can you kill the AC? I think it's ruining our audio. Oh, okay. Much better, thanks. Oh, okay. Look at this cutie with the dog. Oh, man, the chicks down here, there's some... Uh, yeah, that must be garbage day. There's piles of garbage Yeah, everywhere. it is. I think garbage is tomorrow. This guy's going the wrong way down. I think it's on a scooter. I wonder if scooters, you can take scooters on a thing. That's a good shot. Of what? You. Your oh. whole face rather than just your profile. Yeah. Broadway and Kent. I used to live right over here on 60 Broadway. Yeah, see that? Me. That's where I lived. You know, they, 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 I gotta say, they gentrified this because they used to be, look at that, John. Which? Uh, yeah. Okay, yoga pants. Yoga pants. Oh my god. Oh yeah, more yoga pants. After one quarter mile, turn right. Turn right. It's no wonder I remember Kent Avenue. It was on I lived on the block next to it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna turn right. Approximately the next right. All right, let's get some of the check. Out. We got some bootay on them girls. That's what I really, that's the only thing I really miss about the city. Never had trouble finding a date. Never. Turn right, South First Street, then. You have reached your destination on your right. Okay, so first street, and it's on the right. Okay. Uh, South first street. Monday to Friday. Eight to six. What the fuck is this place? 50, look for 50. Yeah. 
Okay, here we are. All right.